All right, so moving on, we'll do the result container now, which is uh, this part right here. Let me just put that on the screen for you. So it's the part underneath the text input where the result will go, which would be just the translation result, I mean. So if I scroll uh, up to our elements, let me just collapse the input container one, and then underneath that, I'll add the result container. So we'll just put a view here, and then, and then uh, the style on that view, style equals and then this can be styles.resultcontainer. I'll copy that there, scroll down, and let me collapse these as well, because we're done with those for now. Okay, result container, and then I scroll up again. In there, we'll just have a nice uh, text element, text like that, and this will be some translation, so for now I'll just put some text there so you can see something, but that will be the translation result eventually. Uh, and the style on this will be style equals styles uh, dot result oops, result text. Uh, copy that. Scroll down, and I'll put the block for that as well. Okay, scroll back up, and then the last element we need, well, the last kind of element, uh, is going to be a touchable opacity. But what I'll do is. Um, Copy it from here, it's very similar. So in the text input above, the text input section, I should say, the input container, I'm gonna copy that with the icon and uh, collapse that again. And I'll just paste it underneath this text element like that. So we're gonna keep the style as icon container. Now, if it's disabled or not, it's not gonna be entered text. We're gonna scroll up. Uh, we're gonna have another one of these state variables for result text. So result text, and this will be set result text. And to be fair, we can use it right now. If I take that result text uh, and stick it in this text element, so instead of that sum translation text I put there originally, we can just put it inside curly brackets, just put that state variable directly. But just to make sure we see some text, I'm gonna add uh, some translation. Oops, some translation, like that. Cool, so now initially it'll be that. Once we add the actual result, I'll, I'll remove that and put it back to an empty string. But for now, we'll put that there so we can actually see something. Uh, and it won't be entered text equals empty string. This will be disabled if result text is an empty string. And the color it will be um, result text. If it's uh, an empty, if it's not an empty string, it will be uh, colors dot. Let's just do text color. But if it is an empty string, it will be this one here, which uh, we're going to need a color for colors. Uh, sorry, text color disabled. So at the bottom, text color disabled. Okay. And this will just be 898989. Cool, let's use that. So instead of primary disabled there, we'll say text color disabled. All right, great. So if I save that, we should see uh, this. Cool. So result text is not equal to that. So if I go up here and set it to an empty string, you should see the color of that button change. So I'll save it now. And you see it changes to a, a, an empty, uh, well, this is the disabled state. So let me put it back just so we can see some text in there. All right, great. So let's add the style now. There's only two things to do, just these two. For this one, a result container, we'll do the same um, like uh, border underneath that we did. So let me go to language container, and I'll take uh, the border style right there, and I'll paste it here. If I save it, we should get a nice border underneath. Um, we are also going to do flex direction row, so I know we could have copied this from up there, uh, but this is okay. So those are now side by side. We're going to want height, oops, height to be 90, uh, which makes it obviously a bit, bit taller. And then the last thing we need is padding vertical, and this is just going to be uh, 15. So the top and bottom padding is going to be 15, so there. All right, cool, we're done with that. So result text underneath. We'll say font family, it's going to be regular. We'll uh, also say, um, Letter spacing is going to be 0 0.3. If you're tired of writing these out over time, you could um, you could put these into some common style if you really want, and you could reuse it. But I'm okay with this. When they say color, it's going to be colors dot primary. So that blue color. If I save it now, see it turns to blue. Great. I also say flex one, which should make it take up the full width. Yep. And then finally, I'm going to put uh, margin horizontal, so margin on the left and right, and set this to uh, 20, like that. So now we've got the same sort of margin as the top. 
All right, great, looking good. Um, so now we know the style's fine, I'll scroll back up and change this use state's initial value to an empty string so that it's disabled by default. Uh, obviously when we come back and set that with the actual result, it will change um, and we'll do something else. Oh, I actually realized we need to change that icon. We don't want an arrow because this is gonna be the copy button. So what we actually want uh, is, let's search for copy. Um, oops, I've got ionicons checked, so I'm gonna uncheck that and I'll scroll down. Uh, you can use anything you want. Um, I don't know what I want to use. Maybe I'll use this one, this content copy. So I'll uh, click that and I'm gonna copy the import. Well, actually I can just use material icons as the import name. So I will uh, go to here and add that, like that, material icons. And then uh, the name is gonna be content-copy. So, uh, oops, I'll go to my icon. Instead of this, it'll be um, content-copy and this is gonna be material icons like that. If I save it, you see it changes to a nice copy button now. Feel free to use whatever icon you want, of course, though.